Assalamualaikum and good greetings. So today we'll be watching a video titled Order of Temptations question mark Bible contradiction number 8. So this is a continuation of a series of videos that I have watched and react to with regard to Christianity. If you are interested to see all the previous videos, all the links are in the description box below. Without further ado, let's watch. Supposed Bible contradiction. Matthew's order of temptations versus Luke's order of temptations. Matthew chapter 4 tells us Jesus was led into the desert for 40 days and was tempted by the devil. First he was tempted to turn rocks into bread and then he was tempted to throw himself off the temple and finally he was tempted with all the kingdoms of the world. However Luke 4 seems to order this differently. He says Jesus was first tempted by turning rocks into bread and then he was tempted with all the kingdoms of the world and finally he was tempted to throw himself off the temple. Okay, so the seemingly contradiction is the order, is it? Which happened first. But what are these? Meaning that Jesus indeed was tempted by the, the devil uh, to do these three things, I guess. Tempted to turn rocks into bread. Tempted with all the kingdom. So in this case, when Jesus is tempted, it is the human side of Jesus, I assume. Or is it also the God side of Jesus? But the temptation is to do, especially the number one, to, to turn rocks into bread. That can be only done by the God side of Jesus, right? Not the human side. So how can the human side be tempted to do what God can do? So what is the correct order? Well, this one can be resolved with a little common sense and looking at what each author says. First, the odd assumption is that everything in the Bible has to be written chronologically and cannot be written topically. But this does not even have to be the case by our own modern standards. In our own history textbooks, ancient history will often be written topically and not strictly chronologically. For example, we will often read a section about the entire history of Egypt, and then in the next section, we will read about the history of China. But this does not mean the history of China started after the history of Egypt wrapped up. It means the author arranged different times topically in order to avoid confusion. We also do this in our everyday lives. Someone may ask you what you did on... So I cannot really capture this. Uh, what he said is, is, is true, of course, but to the verses itself, does it have indication of you know, chronological order or not, right? Because normally I would start there because if the way it is being told as if it, it's, it's a story, then normally people would assume that it is chronological, chronological in order, right? Because so this happened and then he go there and then he go there and then he go there, right? So normally it is understood as chronological, but if it is totally divided into different sections and obviously it is different topics being talked about, then we do not necessarily assume it to be chronological so i'm not sure how to put that in place in terms of the three verses three you know three things that was the three temptation whether each book's is writing style is it indicate chronological or not a vacation and you may respond by listing the highlights but not in an actual chronological order in the same way luke or matthew can list the temptations of jesus but do it topically and not chronologically. And if we look at the actual words Matthew and Luke use, we can see that Luke seems to have arranged it topically. And Matthew is a... Wait, wait, what? And then they turn to Jordan, and he ate nothing. He was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are if you are a son of God, come on the stone to become bread. Uh, and Jesus answered him, it is written, uh, and the devil took him and showed him the kingdom. Wait, and because here I would assume it is chronological, right? Because we say the 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 and the the and normally it is chronological. Normally, hence it is, it is how to say, it would be a valid question if someone asked because because it is in in, in a statement, right? It's not like. Um, Meaning, what else? Meaning, in conversation, right? What else did you do? And then you remember something not really chronological. But when you are telling, 
and this and then he respond and then he said this and that. normally it is understood to be chronological short words matthew and luke use we can see that luke seems to have arranged it topically and how if i just read it i would assume it is chronological because and he didn't and then he took because it's not really dividing topics right it's more of a story of what happened and then what happened and then what happened so i don't understand how this is understood to be topically it's different when if you are presenting a topic and then you extract a story to complement the topic and then you shift and then the, the, the topic and then you extract uh you take a story to to feed the the lesson learned from that topic right so all those stories are understood not to be chronological it's just to fit the topic but here because when you say something happened and something happened and something happened and he said this and it is understood to be chronological so i'm not sure i don't i don't really buy this explanation just from this this snapshot matthew is arranged chronologically an encyclopedia of bible that's just choice of words right so are you saying that it's normal that uh if you do not explicitly explicitly say the word then but it's still written as a story right? as a story flows it's not chronologic chronological well difficulties gleason archer notes matthew uses time ordering words like then in between each temptation whereas luke simply uses the word and so luke is not even claiming they happened in a specific order but that each of these events happen but not in a direct order like matthew says and scholar peter this is i think you can accept this if you are trying to explain right but if you just go to the text normal logical person would firstly assume it is chronological because even though you do not w use the word after that then but it's still from that writing style it's normal for a normal human being to say so if, if you want to say that it is topical you you really have to justify the writing style really how how does it fit topical and just not say that oh see see the word is not time um, bound and hence it is justified not to say you do not want to explain any further the contradiction your david's notes luke is probably doing this for dramatic reasons he mentions the temptation in the wilderness then moves to the mountains of jerusalem then to jerusalem itself luke is focusing on how it all moves to jerusalem as the center of Jesus' ministry and atonement, which is a theme he often draws on. However, even if this is not true, once we use a little common sense, we can see Luke is simply arranging topically and never claimed a list of temptations in an actual chronological order. Thus, this supposed contradiction can be resolved. Okay, this is the first contradiction that I think, of course, um, I think the first few were the, the genealogy, etc. I have reservation as well from the explanation. You can watch the contradiction. Is it number one or number two, right? The rest, because I'm not really familiar with that, uh, the, 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 the contradiction, the supposed contradiction to begin with, so I, I cannot really, you know, comment. This one, I'm not really familiar as well, but the, the video actually take a snapshot of those verses and just reading to those verses, uh the explanation really do not compel me that much anyway so that's this video um thank you for watching see you next time